guys and Spider-Man fans, welcome back to my channel. This is Isaac Doom Reviews, my name is Alan Brinker, and we are here. The final Spider-Man movie review leading up to Spider-Man No Way Home. I first reviewed The Amazing Spider-Man. Now we're going to end the Spider-Man movies off that I haven't reviewed on this channel with a bang. Seriously, a bang. Because we get to review... Probably, in my opinion, the worst Spider-Man film that I've seen in this entire franchise. Let's talk about The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Which is directed by Sony. Stars Sony. It's about Sony trying to make this movie a series of six movie. But still has the same cast in the first movie. Andrew Garfield returning as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. Sally Field returning as Aunt May. Emma Stone returning as Gwen Stacy. But it's an obvious Sony adaptation of The Series of Six. That's probably the best way to explain The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Sony. Just one word to describe The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Sony. Man, I really hate this movie. I honestly am not a fan of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. The first movie was pretty dull. I thought it was okay. It has positives, but it's mostly a misleading movie. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 made the first movie much better. Because this movie just made a misleading movie even worse. I said in my Spider-Man 3 review that this film has a lot of plot holes. At least the plot holes in Spider-Man 3, there are some good ones in there. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 did the exact same thing as Spider-Man 3, with a lot of villains in one movie, with a lot of plot holes. But the difference is, the plots in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 are not interesting because the problem with this movie, it really doesn't know what it wants to be. Really doesn't. It doesn't know what the main plot's trying to be. Peter and Gwen Stacy, relationship problems, because in The Amazing Spider-Man, Captain Stacy died from the lizard, and he told him to stay away from Gwen, but of course Peter Parker does a dumb decision at the end of The Amazing Spider-Man to be with Gwen. And then he left her again. Also, Jamie Foxx has Electro. He turns into Electro that fixes the gaps in his teeth. Yeah, the magic eels can fix a gap in his teeth. I don't get that. Also, we got Dane the Hunt as Harry Osborn that came out of complete nowhere. And becomes a Green Goblin at the very end of the movie. Because, why not? It's Sony. Rhino was in this movie for like two scenes. That is it. And there's also this like mysterious stranger. That walks like with Easter eggs or Spider-Man suits. And we don't know what he is. He's in the first movie. In this movie we've never revealed who he is. Also there's another plot with Peter's parents. A thing that misled in the first movie. So they decide to do it again with this movie. Do you see where I'm going at with this film? The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is a terrible mess. This movie, every single plot of this movie, felt like it just should have been one movie. They just felt like they're cramping so many movies in this movie that are honestly really terrible because they're not developed very well. The movie doesn't know what it wants to be. And I thought all these plots in this movie are just so not interesting. I actually find The Amazing Spider-Man 2 pretty boring. I would say there are positives, which we're going to talk about that last, but I really want to get the negatives out of the way. So many plots, so unnecessary. You can really tell that this movie is just setting up a series of six film with all these villains. Let's talk about the villains in this film. Jamie Foxx as Electro. I would say Jamie Foxx was fine in the film. He's a great actor and he gives it all he's got. But I just don't find him fascinating. He's basically a copy and paste of Riddler from Batman Forever. A guy that's obsessed with the hero that turns into a villain and turns on against the hero. Exactly the same. I hated the design of Electro in this movie. I thought he looked really stupid in the film. I hate the blue, like, electrical things that's on him. I hate the blue design on him. I love the original Electro design in the comics. And every single time he uses his powers, it always has, like, this stupid dubstep music. Like, the final battle between Spider-Man and Electro, he, like, dubsteps into it to Spider. While it happens, it is just so dumb. It is really freaking dumb. I can see that Sony is trying to market dubstep as well. And there are so 
many Sony products in this film. There are so many that you can really tell that Sony takes over this project more than Mark Webb does, and I feel really bad. Dane DeHaan as Harry Osborn slash Green Goblin. Why is he in this film? They're putting a plot of this film that he needs Spider-Man's blood because he is dying. His father, Norman Osborn, is in this movie, not all that much in the film. He died because, you know, he has 60 years to live with this disease he has. But somehow Harry Osborn is dying right away. It doesn't make any fucking sense. And Dana Hunt's performance in this film was... So one-dimensional. On my 16th birthday. You give me scars, Peter. You betrayed me! He just acts so dull in this film. And him as the Green Goblin... First of all, why is that even in there? It just feels so unnecessary. Oh, because they're going to do the famous Gwen Stacy death scene for no apparent reason. They just put it in to just get nostalgic over with, I guess. I don't know why they put that stuff in the film. It just happens. That's this movie. It just happens for no reason. Just for fan service, I guess? It didn't work either way. And don't get me started on Paul Giamatti as Rhino. Oh my god. I'll give this a positive. He wasn't much in this film. I'm kind of glad. If it wasn't in this movie, this film wouldn't make any difference. That's why this film is an obviously Sinister Six setup. Especially towards the end when you see the Rhino. Where Spider-Man like, was about to fight Rhino and it would be a cool scene. But no, they just make that the end of the film. You don't even see the fight. They just put it at the end and it marketed so much in the trailers. What the fuck, Sony? Just what the Fuck Sony. This movie is a mess. It's an obvious Sinister Six, like, setup. You think Batman v Superman did a bad job setting up the Justice League that it's an obviously Justice League setup. This movie makes Batman v Superman a masterpiece. Because this movie did it even worse in my opinion. It set up a Sinister Six movie that never actually happens. This movie has a lot of plot conveniences and none of them are interesting. I didn't buy any of the plots in the film because this movie was a mess, it's boring, nothing fucking happens. But, there are some things I did like about The Amazing Spider-Man 2 though. There are a couple of things. Andrew Garfield does a better performance as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. I think him as Peter Parker definitely improves in this film. I do like Andrew Garfield's acting in the film, especially towards Gwen Stacy's death in the film. You can see, he really brings it all. And I think Andrew Garfield definitely did improve from the first Amazing Spider-Man. I think he is good as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. I think he's the best part of these movies because Andrew Garfield is such a likable actor and I think he does a good job for what he's given. And I think in this movie it shows that he's good as Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. His chemistry with Gwen Stacy was really cute in the film. Even though it's a plot that I wasn't interested in, I do like Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield's chemistry. I think Sally Field as Aunt May, I didn't mention her in the first movie review, I think she is underrated as Aunt May. I didn't mind her as Aunt May. She plays a sweet aunt that tries to be a mother to Peter Parker, and I do like their chemistry also with her and Peter. And I'll definitely say the suit in this movie looks much better than the first Amazing Spider-Man. I actually really love the design of the suit. I love the big eyes in the suit. It looks completely different. I think the suit in the movie was my favorite aspect of this film. I really love the design of the suit. And even though there are some problems with action scenes, like, you know, the dubstep with Electro, I think the action scenes are very well done. I love the action scenes of the film. That's probably something that I would watch repeatedly with the Amazing Spider-Man movies, the action, because they're fine. And I think this movie did the action much better than the first one. I actually really like the fight between Spider-Man and Electro in the final battle. It is visually stunning. I think the visual effects actually don't look bad in the film. I think the visual effects do look really, really good in the film. And like the Gwen Stacy death scene, like I said, they did that a good job, even though it was, came out of nowhere. I think how it's handled, I actually kind of like. But guys, overall, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is obviously the worst Spider-Man film in the franchise. This movie has a lot of plot convenience and it's an obviously Sinister Six setup because this movie puts way too many villains for no apparent reason. You can see that Sony is taking over this project more than Mark Webb. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is Sony's disaster. And lucky that Spider-Man's in the MCU and they totally fixed what the Andrew Garfield films are missing because Sony is just taking way too hands on this project. I really hate The Amazing Spider-Man 2 despite from the positives I have. This movie is honestly a train wreck. I'm, go I'm going to give The Amazing Spider-Man 2 a D+. Plus. Woo! Yes! Yes! We've done my Spider-Man review, guys. 
We are here now, No Way Home. The review is coming out very soon, especially some new reviews that are coming up and I will upload some new reviews very, very soon after this. Now new reviews are coming and some Christmas stuff and obviously the end of year list. I'm really excited. I watched so many movies this month so far, so I wanna get these movies done and over with to end this year off. But of course, No Way Home review is coming up very, very soon. So look forward to that. But thank you guys so much for watching these Spider-Man reviews. And I promise new reviews will come up very, very soon. What do you guys think of The Amazing Spider-Man 2 for the final Spider-Man movie? Do you like the film? Hate the film? You thought it's okay? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you guys follow me on social media links down below. Facebook, Status, Instagram, Twitter, and Letterboxd. Keep contact with me. And make sure you guys subscribe to my channel notify for my latest movie reviews and other movie related content. And have a nice day. Thank you.